Welcome to the Ashtoware training course on the principles and application of design concepts in the Mechanistic Empirical Pavement Design Guide. The course you are about to take provides an overview of the principles and fundamentals included in the Mechanistic Empirical Pavement Design Guide. Before you get started, we would like to define two terms that will be used throughout the course. These terms are MEPDG, or Mechanistic Empirical Pavement Design Guide, and PMED, or PMED, Pavement ME Design. The MEPDG refers to the manual of practice, while PMED refers to the software itself. I would like to introduce Mr. Clark Morrison, who is the chairperson of the Ashtoware Pavement ME Task Force. Mr. Morrison will introduce the course and make some introductory comments about the course itself. Good day and welcome to the Ashtoware training course on the principles and application of the Pavement ME Design software. I'm Clark Morrison, State Pavement Design Engineer with the North Carolina Department of Transportation. I also represent the Ashtoware Pavement ME Design Task Force. The training materials and modules you're about to engage in were sponsored by Ashtoware to facilitate use of the software for designing new flexible and rigid pavements, as well as the design of rehabilitation strategies for flexible and rigid pavements. The reference document for the course is the Mechanistic Empirical Pavement Design Guide Manual of Practice. As you go through the different modules for the course, you will hear two terms, MEPDG and PMED. MEPDG refers to the manual of practice and PMED refers to the software. The MEPDG manual of practice is balloted periodically to include enhancements added to the software approved by the Committee on Materials and Pavements, Technical Subcommittee 5D on pavement design. The PMED is the software and software cannot be balloted but the software is a direct implementation of the manual of practice. I suggest you as a user review the enhancements made to the software in the future. You can access the resources for PMED at the Ashtoware website here on the screen. I also encourage you to contact the Ashtoware PMED help desk to answer questions you may have about the software. The phone number for the help desk is 1-217 356-4500. You can also send questions through the website here on the screen or send an email to pavementmedesign at ara.com. Now back to the course. The course was prepared as a virtual training course, but can also be delivered as an in-person training course. The course explains the principles and fundamentals for how the software predicts pavement distress and discusses the inputs needed for the distress predictions. At the end of the course, you will not be an expert in pavement design, but you should understand the principles and fundamentals of the PMED software, how those principles and fundamentals are applied, and how to obtain the inputs for using the PMED software. There are five overall learning outcomes for the course. The first learning outcome is to describe the concepts and principles of ME-based pavement design approaches. The second is to define a transfer function and describe how it is used within the ME-based pavement design approach. This includes the relationships between pavement responses and pavement damage, applying the incremental accumulation of damage, stating the relationships between damage and pavement distress, and understand the relationship between distress and smoothness. The third is to describe how to apply the transfer functions for predicting pavement distress and using the outcomes for designing pavements. This third outcome includes understanding reliability and the importance of the standard error of the estimate that influences the performance prediction and final design solution in terms of cost and constructability. The fourth is to identify and list the inputs that have a significant effect on the calculated damage and distress. And the fifth is to identify critical structural responses for predicting pavement distress. I hope you enjoy the course and it provides you with the information and knowledge needed to start using the software for pavement designs within your agency or organization. Thank you and have a great course. This is a course on the mechanistic empirical concepts and methods implemented in the Ashtoware Pavement ME design software for both rigid and flexible pavement designs. 
many details are required to fully understand mechanistic empirical based approaches. The key concepts of mechanistic empirical design are covered within this course, which are included in the MEPDG Manual of Practice. Chapter 5, Performance Indicator Prediction Methodologies and Overview, includes a description and overview of all transfer functions and models which are used to predict pavement distress for both flexible and rigid pavements. The course is grouped into three segments. Segment one is focused on the basic information a user needs to understand in using the PMED software. This segment includes four modules. Module one is the introduction to the course. Module two includes an overview of the mechanistic empirical design concepts. Module three is focused on the risk and reliability defined in the MEPDG Manual of Practice and applied in the PMED software. Module four is an overview of the input variables in the PMED software for the design strategies. Segment two gets into the design strategies for new, rigid, flexible, and semi-rigid pavement design strategies. Module five focuses on rigid pavements, both jointed plane concrete pavements, or JPCP, and continuously reinforced concrete pavements, or CRCP. Jointed reinforced concrete pavements is not considered a design strategy by the MEPDG. Module six focuses on flexible and semi-rigid pavements. Segment three focuses on the rehabilitation design of rigid, flexible, and semi-rigid pavements. Module seven is an overview of pavement rehabilitation design as used in the PMED software, specifically determining the in-place structural condition of the existing pavement. Module eight focuses on rehabilitation designs for rigid pavements, and Module 9 focuses on rehabilitation design of flexible and semi-rigid pavements. This concludes a welcome to the MEPDG course. The course will now begin with Module number 1. Module 1 is the introduction to the course. There are five overall course objectives or learning outcomes for this course. The first learning outcome is to describe the principles and concepts of mechanistic empirical based pavement designs. This outcome is basically covered under module two of segment number one. The second learning outcome is to list the key inputs that have a significant effect <clears throat> on pavement distress predictions. This outcome is covered under module four of segment number one. The third learning outcome is to list the critical payment responses included in the fundamental material laws used to predict payment distress. This outcome is covered under modules five and six of segment two, as well as under modules seven, eight, and nine for rehabilitation design of segment number three. The fourth learning outcome is to define and describe the transfer functions and how they are used within the mechanistic empirical based approach. This outcome is covered under module two of segment one and under modules five and six of segment number two. The fifth learning outcome is to explain use of the mechanistic empirical based approach for pavement design. This outcome is covered throughout the course and included in all segments. Any mechanistic empirical pavement design procedure includes two major components, a mechanistic component and an empirical component, which need to be combined to predict pavement distress. The mechanistic component includes a pavement response model to calculate pavement responses of stress, strain, and deflection from truck loads and environmental loads. The mechanistic component also includes the use and application of a fundamental material law or performance property 
using a critical pavement response. The fundamental material law or performance property will be defined in module two and all are discussed in chapter five of the MEPDG Manual of Practice. The empirical component is basically a mathematical function or relationship or regression equation between pavement response calculated from the mechanistic component and observed pavement distress along the roadway. There are many mechanistic empirical based procedures that have been developed over the years. So mechanistic empirical based methods are not considered a new pavement design procedure. Some examples of mechanistic empirical based design procedures and the approximate year when they were published or developed and available for use are included in the next two slides. First, some examples of mechanistic empirical based rigid pavement design procedures. As shown on this slide, mechanistic empirical based rigid pavement design procedures have been around for many years, dating back to 1926. Westergaard's equation and the Portland Cement Association fatigue-based design procedures were available for use even before the Ashto road test that was constructed in the latter 1950s. These are some examples of mechanistic empirical-based pavement design procedures for flexible or asphalt surface pavements. Mechanistic empirical based asphalt pavement designs procedures started being used much later after the ASHO road test and certainly much later than the mechanistic empirical based rigid pavement design procedures listed on the previous slides. One reason why mechanistic empirical based procedures have been around for a longer period of time for rigid pavement design is that fundamental engineering or mechanical properties have been measured and used for Portland cement concrete materials, while asphalt properties used and designed for flexible pavements have basically included volumetric and some empirical based properties. The focus of this course is on the MEPDG or PMED software. This slide includes a simplistic flow chart for many of the mechanistic empirical based pavement design procedure listed on the previous two slides. A more detailed flow chart is included in Chapter 1 of the MEPDG Manual of Practice. You are encouraged to review Chapter 1 of the MEPDG Manual of Practice after completing Module 1. The flow chart and execution of the PMED software can be basically grouped into six major functions. The input function. Many inputs are required for the PMED software as shown on the screen, and we will cover each input category in detail under Module 4. The structural response function. Pavement structural responses are calculated from the inputs. Different structural responses are measured for different pavement distress predictions. Most of the mechanistic empirical based procedures for flexible pavements use elastic layer analyses like when Julia to compute pavement responses. And for rigid pavements, pavement responses are computed using finite element analyses like ISLAB in combination with neural networks. The fundamental material law function Critical responses of stress, strain, or deflection are used to determine the allowable number of load applications through the fundamental material law. The fundamental material laws will be discussed in detail in modules 5 and 6. The pavement damage function. Pavement damage is calculated over time using the actual number of load applications relative to the fundamental material law. Not all of the distress prediction methodologies, however, include the calculation of pavement damage. Some of the distress prediction methodologies relate the critical pavement response from the pavement response model directly to the distress itself 
observed on the pavement surface. The transfer function. The transfer function is used to calculate pavement distress over time. The transfer functions used in the PMED software will be defined in the next slide. The evaluate distress function. The predicted distresses and failure criterion are used to determine the reliability of the design itself. In other words, the pavement damage through the transfer function is used to predict individual pavement distresses over time in comparison to the threshold or design criteria to determine the reliability of the design. The transfer functions are a major element of mechanistic empirical based design procedures. The transfer function is defined as the link or mathematical relationship or a regression equation between structural response or what we calculate and pavement distress or what we can see and measure on the pavement surface. The transfer function in the PMED software are explained and discussed under Section 5 of the MEPDG Manual of Practice. Latter modules of this course will cover the individual transfer function for both flexible and rigid pavements. In summary, the link or mathematical relationship is determined by the critical response for a specific distress as defined from the fundamental material law for each of the materials. The fundamental material law then determines the damage of the pavement and or the number of allowable load applications for the material. Damage is used to estimate the amount of distress through the transfer function. Calibration of the transfer functions is an important element regarding the accuracy of the predicted distress. Calibration of the transfer functions is a separate activity and is not covered in this course. The elements of the MEPDG can be grouped into four categories, which are the same regardless of pavement type for most of the mechanistic empirical based design procedures. The site condition factors include climate, traffic, soils, or foundation, and the condition of the existing pavement for rehabilitation design. The material or layer properties include different volumetric and mechanical properties, modulus and strength, thermal properties, and performance properties defined by the fundamental material laws. The pavement design factors include interlayer friction between the different layers, structural responses, damage indices, the transfer functions, and the failure criteria. The outcomes from the design analysis are the pavement distresses predicted over time and the reliability of the design strategy. These elements are covered individually in the latter modules of this course. The outputs or outcomes from the PMED software are also covered for the individual pavement types and predicted distresses. This ends Module 1. The next module of the training course sequencing is Module 2, an overview of mechanistic empirical design concepts, specifically those used in the PMED software.